Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk Janady Golovkin versus Martin Murray. Understand Murray famously knocked down Sergio Martinez. Right? Nice right hand. Right? Understand that Martin Murray has never been stopped in a professional boxing match. Right? Believe it or not, that loss to Sergio Martinez is the only loss on Murray's resume. Right? Understand Martin Murray is physically bigger than Janady Golovkin. Murray, in fact, is big for middleweight. He's six feet tall. Right? Understand Murray's mentally tough. He's on the road. He fights Felix Sturm. Right? Many people believe that he beat Felix Sturm. Right? I would encourage you to look at the CompuBox numbers of that fight. Understand officially that fight was a draw. Right? He goes to Argentina to fight Sergio Martinez. Understand that he gave Martinez one of the better fights that Martinez had before Martinez's loss to Miguel Cotto. Right? Many people are looking at the quality of Martin Murray's opposition, right? Felix Sturm, keep in mind, Felix Sturm recently gave a good showing of himself at 168 pounds, right? Felix Sturm, of course, destroyed Darren Barker at 160 pounds, right? And they're looking at Murray against Sergio Martinez, right? A fight in which, quite frankly, Martinez had to win the last two rounds to win the fight. And they're reaching the conclusion, given his chin history, right, never having been knocked out, and, of course, the fact that he's faced big-time fighters, many people feel that this might be the guy to actually give Janady Golovkin problems, right? Understand, Golovkin's last five fights, none of them have made it past the eighth round, right? Golovkin recently destroyed Marco Antonio Rubio in two rounds. The fight before that... Daniel Gill in three rounds. Golovkin has been on a roll. Now all of that said, let me give you a different focus. Rather than focusing on Martin Murray's chin history and the quality of the opponents Martin Murray faced in the past, why don't we here instead focus on the actual styles of the fighters? Because, in my opinion, styles make fights. Now, because of the styles of the fighters, the way I'm going to play this is I'm going to take Janady Golovkin to win this fight. And because the 14 to 1 odds being offered on Golovkin to win are too long, the bet I'm going to make is Golovkin to win by KO. I'm going to risk it on a stoppage by the champion. Let's talk about why. Right? Golovkin really is two people. Right? There's the fighter who, quite frankly, has completely changed his style. And then there's the trainer He's a trainer you need to know about. His name is Abel Sanchez. You remember Terrible Terry Norris? Abel Sanchez was his trainer. You remember Miguel Angel Gonzalez? Right? Abel Sanchez was his trainer. Right? Understand that every trainer has their masterpiece student right you could look at a trainer and look at a period of time and you can then say okay well that guy 
was the masterpiece for that trainer. Right? I would say Freddie Roach's prize student, everyone knows it, is Manny Pacquiao. Now, that doesn't mean that Freddie doesn't have other big-time clients doing big-time things. Miguel Cotto, for example. But you understand that Freddie Roach took Manny Pacquiao to the next level. You understand that the Pacquiao that existed before he met up with Freddie Roach was radically changed, was lifted to a different level by Freddie Roach. I would argue if you look at the career of Emmanuel Stewart, there's the Thomas Hearns era. There's the Lennox Lewis era. Then there's the Vladimir Klitschko era. Now that doesn't mean that Emmanuel Stewart didn't train several great fighters in the Kronk Gym and didn't train several other great fighters. Right? The point, though, is you understand the signature of certain trainers. Janady Golovkin, quite frankly, is the signature fighter of Abel Sanchez. Now, Sanchez has trained other people. Tavares Cloud, for example. But his style didn't really fit Cloud as well as it fit Golovkin. Because Golovkin has certain abilities that Cloud didn't have. Let's talk about Golovkin for a second, then we'll talk about what I think you need to beat Golovkin. And why I feel Martin Murray doesn't have it. Right? Golovkin is a cautious stalker. Right? Criminal profilers in profiling, let's say, potential perpetrators, suspects, right? They'll split you into groups. They'll have the disorganized group, right? You show up, the crime scene doesn't look particularly well planned out. Looks like the criminal kind of was doing it on the fly, right? Criminal might have had a lot of aggression, but you also see a lot of sloppiness and stuff like that. Then you have the organized suspect, right? You walk in, wow, no DNA. You know, you walk in, if the burglary is staged, it's well staged, right? There's no watches or jewelry on the table, right? That's all gone, right? The uh, draws look like they've actually been gone through, even though the organized perp, right, didn't have robbery as a motive. He's just covering the basis to throw you off the scent. Janady Golovkin is extremely organized, right? He's a cautious stalker in my parlance, right? He's the guy who you're walking down the street and you look over your shoulder and you see a guy a block away from you, right? Is he following you? You know, you're not quite sure. Is he going to make a move right now? You're not quite sure. Is he just a stranger walking on the street? You're, you're not quite sure. Then you look over your shoulder and suddenly, you know, the guy is half a block away. Right? Then you get to your front door and you're, you know, with your keys and stuff. You look over your shoulder. You don't quite see him. Right? But there are other people on the street. So then you fumble in your pocket. You're nervous. You're a nervous wreck. You... Try to open your door, you're fumbling with your keys, and suddenly, there he is. Right? And he doesn't mean well. That's Golovkin. Understand, he's hyper-aggressive. By the second round, he's going to be on you. He's hyper-aggressive. But yet, that aggression is channeled. So that in the first round... He's not up on you. This is one of the hardest punchers, pound for pound, in the sport of boxing. He's not up on you. He's not on his back foot. He's not moving away from you. But he doesn't burst in your front door out the gate. He follows you for a little bit. He sees your habits. Right? So, he's outside. He's not close enough. For you to hit him in the body. Right? He's patient. But then you notice that the ring's disappearing around you. Right? He's cornering you. 
Suddenly you thought you had a few feet between you and the rope, and then you realize, wow, the rope is quicker and closer to you than you thought. Right? Everything looks like coincidence. You know, oh, Golovkin was away from me. Oh, Golovkin's a little bit closer. Oh, you, you know what? This, this rope is closer to me, too. Oh, you know what? Golovkin's a little bit closer to me now. Oh, now suddenly it's on. Right? So make no mistake. By the second round, Golovkin's going to be on Murray like white on rice. Right? But he's going to do it in a way where he's away from Murray. But he's positioning Murray. Few people cut off the ring better in the sport of boxing than Janady Golovkin. Understand the genius of Abel Sanchez. And this is signature. This is a trainer's unique blueprint. Is to have fighters who somehow get you into position. Just off their position. Who are aggressive and who are coming forward. Without really engaging you. Right? Right? Golovkin's not pumping a jab. He's not setting the table. Rather, he's looking where the table is. He's looking what window in your defense he can get through. Then he's going to lead with power shots. Now, to beat Golovkin, let me point out, too, and this is what Tavares Cloud didn't have that Golovkin had. Right? Tavares Cloud hits hard. But he doesn't have what I call ring coverage. He doesn't have the ability to hit you from halfway across the ring. Right? That takes timing. In other words, I'm talking about the fighters who have a drop step. Right? Who can be too far away from you. But they know that if they just drop their foot and lean a certain way... They can throw incredibly hard punches from like six feet out. Right? Think, hey. Think Vladimir Klitschko. Right? These are the guys who can hit you hard. Roy Jones Jr. Right? These are the guys who are way out and they can hit you with serious power from way out. Look at the Roy Jones Vinny Paz fight. You'll see what I'm talking about, right? So to beat Golovkin, and this is not an exhaustive list, you need to be one of a few things, right? First, I believe, and it's an either-or type thing. Maybe you have more of these traits, but you need one or more of these traits. You need a small strike zone. In other words, you need to be the kind of defensive fighter where Golovkin only has a small window to operate with. In other words, you know, you can't be open defensively. That doesn't work. This guy hits too hard. You don't want him getting close to you and then realizing that he could hit you one of three or four ways. No, you need to force him into one opening, right? So you need a small strike zone and the ability to get close enough to counter, right? I thought the Curtis Stevens fight was interesting because Stevens has a small strike zone. The problem was the bullet started flying and Stevens then clammed up, right? You need a guy with a small strike zone who is still able to be offensive, is still able to come forward, has the ability to get close enough to counter and to counter Golovkin because Golovkin is not defensively gifted, right? His defense really is positioning, pre-attack. It's not blocking shots during the attack. So to me, you need a small strike zone Right? And the ability to get close enough to counter. That's one trait. Another way to possibly beat Golovkin 
is you need to have quick lateral movement, right? Because this is a guy coming in trying to hit you from distance, right? He can shorten his punches a bit, but that initial approach, he's outside. He's looking for an opening, then he's going to lunge in. So you need a guy who's going to force him to reset, who has quick lateral movement, right? Because what lateral movement does is it forces the other guy, right, to change his aim, right, to change what he's going to do. If you're always in the same spot, anyone can hit a stationary target. Lateral movement guys present you with a moving target. You need a guy who has lateral movement and who marries it to a bending upper body. In other words, it's bad enough you're moving side to side. But then, of course, while you're moving, your body's bending. I still can't hit you in the chest. Right? I don't know how to hit you in the kidneys because you're moving at the waist. Now, I thought that was going to be the fight that Daniel Gill put down on Janady Golovkin. But then, like Stevens, he tasted Golovkin's power. So then he moved away. He was no longer close enough to counter Golovkin. Right? Because keep in mind, you're trying to fight Golovkin. You're not trying to cover up from Golovkin. Right? So what I found was Daniel Gill then, too far away to counter, right, found himself too defensive, running away from Golovkin, right? We're looking for the kind of quick lateral movement and bending upper body that someone like an Andre Ward can do, right? That someone like a James DeGale can do. Let me point out, that's rear in boxing, right? The third thing, the other trait that might help you with Golovkin is ring coverage, Right? A Roy Jones Jr. against a Golovkin, that'd be interesting. Right? Because Roy would be outside. Right? He'd be moving around. Then he'd be able to come in and he'd be able to come in strong. You know who'd be a great fight for Golovkin? If they were the same weight class, and I know they're not, that would be Yorkie's Gamboa. Right? We're talking about guys who are outside and then suddenly they can come in with power shots. Right? In other words, Golovkin, who has a big punch, needs to know that you can punch back. So when you're far away and he's trying to stalk you, he'd have to be a little bit tentative. Because if he stalks you too much and you jump in at the right time, maybe you drop him. Now, in my opinion, Martin Murray doesn't have these traits, right? He doesn't have the real small strike zone and the ability to get close enough to counter. He doesn't have the quick lateral movement and bending up the body. And he doesn't have the ring coverage. In fact, he doesn't have big power. He has a less than 40% KO ratio. In other words... Right? I think he's going to have a hard time getting inside on Golovkin, and I don't think Golovkin is going to pay for being open for counters. Now, let me talk about the guys Murray fought, just from a style perspective. You know, Sergio Martinez and Felix Sturm, I would argue, want you to come after them. They want you to hunt them. Right? I believe that gives a guy like Murray, who's really a chess player, right? Murray wants to have a fight with you, but he wants that fight to be measured. He wants to counter what you're doing with his own combinations, right? Understand, I believe Martinez's fight style gave Murray an opportunity to think, right? Murray went the distance with both Martinez and... Felix Sturm, right? Understand, there's a moment in the Martinez-Bethy-Macklin fight 
where Macklin goes on his back foot and Martinez does everything possible to get Macklin off his back foot onto his front foot. Because Sergio Martinez, like Ali, like for you to look, you know, come after him. Right? So Amari, who's a chess player, was able to look at Martinez and pick his spots. Right? Murray knew, hey, I don't want to jump inside on Sergio. Sergio, that's his game. He has a big punch on people who jump inside. Right? Think Paul Williams. How Sergio dusted him off. So Murray was able to kind of idle a bit. Right? Be outside. Come in when he wanted to. Know that Martinez really wasn't going to hunt him down. Murray had the opportunity to think. That match had a certain pace. He won't get that opportunity against Golovkin. Golovkin's a hunter. Right? He's not he's not waiting for you to jump in. You gotta be kidding me. No, he's a hunter. Right? I believe we're gonna be surprised by the pacing of this fight. And by how Golovkin's able to get inside and land huge punches. In other words, Murray won't be able to stand out there and think about his next chess move. No. With Golovkin, understand, there's the threat of immediate violence. You know Golovkin has ring, you know, uh, reach, right? Ring coverage. You know Golovkin can hurt you. Then you see Golovkin and he's cutting off the ring. Suddenly, you're forced to fight. Even warriors like Curtis Stevens find themselves covering up early. Daniel Gill. Right? There's no time. You're not out there for several rounds saying, okay, when do I step forward? You know, okay, there's Sergio. Let me let me try to set him up for my right hand. No, that's not a Golovkin fight. Golovkin, you're there, and guess what? Golovkin is cutting off the escape routes. Right? Suddenly you're looking around, you're like, oh man, I'm 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 close to the corner here. How am I gonna get out of this jam? Then of course Golovkin's jumping in, and the punches are harder than you expect. Let me say this too. Murray's shrewd. Murray likes to throw combinations and will throw hooks to the body. The problem with that is if I have the hand and I'm going low, punching to the body is dangerous. That's why Klitschko, Ali, predominantly headhunters. Right? Because understand, if I'm up here, when I lean to hit you in the body with a left hook, you see how open this side of my face is. That's why you'll notice great defensive fighters, Mayweather, will throw a body shot and will have a hand up. Will have a shoulder up. Hopkins will learn how to cover while throwing shots. Right? Murray's open to me when he throws some of his body shots. Abel Sanchez... And Janady Golovkin are just going to wait for that opportunity. Right? They see Murray trying to go to the body. Golovkin's going to come up top at that moment. Right? I think Murray's style will leave him exposed against a hunter like Janady Golovkin. I like Golovkin in this fight. Because I don't believe in betting on 14 to 1s, the play I'm going to make is Golovkin by KO. Understand the risk involved. Murray has never been KO'd. That's how I see it. Let me hear how you see it. Leave your comments for all of us here in the comment section to this video. Good luck. Thanks for stopping by.